my name is Krista Mayshore. I'm with CDAT. If you're here, obviously one of our certified homeowner advocates has been in touch with you. We're here to educate you today about loan modifications. I'm also here with the founder of CDAT, who formerly was an IndyMac Bank loss mitigator, Lee Honish. Hi, my name is Lee Honish. I am the former head loss mitigator for IndyMac Bank's HELOC division. For the last 22 years, I've been a professional asset manager, and for the last five, I have trained real estate agents. Our objective today is to educate you about loan modifications from one of the best. So, Lee, um, tell me your thoughts about loan modifications. From banking perspective, because honestly, that's why you're watching, or the any or any reason that you'd want to hear my answer. From the bank's perspective, a loan mod is a fantastic thing. From a homeowner perspective, there it's a terrible thing. There's two types of loan modifications, and I've always explained it this way. There's one that's good, and there's one that's bad. If you're lucky enough, you get what's called a recast or a rewrite of real terms, where you get an equity reduction, you get new terms, they kill off seconds, they do all kinds of magical things. Now, how often does that happen? Where they it's actually just, reduce principal. It's just slightly under 1%. Um, it's about the equivalent of hitting the lottery. Uh, <clears throat> and even in those cases, a percentage of that group still winds up not paying the bank. I mean, that's just a mind-blowing thing. You actually hit the lottery, and then you still default on those payments anyway. By and large, what traditionally happens in the industry, someone gets a trial loan modification. A trial loan modification is usually a three- to six-month period, depending on the bank where they adjust the terms, you pay less than what's agreed, the bank in turn keeps marking you as late, which I find amusing to no end. Nobody ever pulls their credit, um, and we've seen it already. How many times do we go and meet with a homeowner where they believe that they have a loan modification, and yet they're still being marked on their credit as being delinquent, and actually have a sale date posted mm -hmm. at the end of the rainbow? I but can I actually attest to that. I'm a former and still currently have worked with uh, many banks who foreclose on people, and when we knock on the door to tell them that the house is foreclosed, inevitably they, what I hear is, I'm doing a loan modification, that can't be the truth. And it happens every day to hundreds of people. The loan mod does three things for a bank at the end of the day. It gathers information that they didn't have previously. Two, it gathers money, which they certainly didn't have previously. And number three, it buys a bank more time so that they can manage the, the declining assets or the, the negative assets. They know you're going to default. They play the odds so that you're going to. Let's be very realistic about this. Even in a no-doc, low-doc, spit-and-spackle, simplified world of the loan that you took out in the first place, usually a 3-1 or a 5-1 with a 20% home equity line of credit on the backside is your 80-20 in the split for the purchase money. You went through a process called underwriting where they actually scrutinized, they checked your job, and they did certain things. Now, since you're not paying, it's just a rational moment. Now that you're not paying, you want to believe that the bank somehow, magically, is going to overlook everything. Just take your paperwork and give you new terms so that you can live in your house indefinitely. In almost all cases, they do not reduce principal. And if they do, typically it's never more than 10%. So if you're $300,000 upside down on a house, and your house is worth 600000 even if they remove $60,000, you're still $240,000 upside down on your house. Think logically about how long it's going to take for you to get back to just your even real position. equity reduction. You will get a real letter from the bank saying you're getting a real equity reduction. The major lenders do do it. It is less than 1%. It does happen, um, but unless you have a physical, tangible letter saying that that's going to occur with a reduction of rate and adjustment of terms and a reduction of the equity, then it's not happening. So there's some basics you need to know. There's no such thing, if you've already done a loan mod, there's no such thing as a modification of a modification. You might be able to get a trial loan mod to a trial loan mod to a trial loan mod, but you're never going to get a full loan mod to a new full loan mod. You get one term, generally, with a bank. Again, there are exceptions, but I'm not here to talk about the exceptions. I'm here to talk about you. We're talking about the averages, okay? So there are two types of loan mods, trial and what's really called a recast. A recast happens where they tack the late payments onto the end, they adjust the rates and the terms, and they just sort of let this thing fly for as long as it can possibly go. That's what you're normally going to get in a long-term setting.